In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to fix harsh shadows in Lightroom and how to make it look natural. So if you've spent any time taking photos outside, you know that if the lighting conditions aren't great, you're gonna get harsh shadows. And when you're taking photos of people, portraits, that can make your portrait look terrible. But there are ways to fix that in Lightroom. So let's jump right in. Okay, so this photo is from a family portrait shoot that I did, and as you can see, I am using flash even in the daytime, and that's one way you can avoid harsh shadows is to use flash to fill in those shadows. But in this particular shot, the flash didn't fire. It happens sometimes. And what we have, especially on, on these folks on the left here, and this is where we're gonna spend our time, we're gonna focus on them, is some harsh shadows here on this side of the face and some bright highlights on this side of the face. One of the ways that you can fix this and, and where I'd start is just simply using the global adjustments. And you can get a long way with increasing the shadows and then decreasing the highlights. Now, one of the problems you have when you decrease the highlights this much is that you can see the sky here just gets this muddy kind of partially gray color. So there's two ways you can avoid that. One is to just simply not decrease the highlights as much. And you can see you're not really gaining much with those highlights on their face. I think you can go about negative 65 and that's as good as you're going to get. But you still, the sky is a little bit muddy, so we're gonna we're gonna bump up the exposure. And the good thing here is, because we've decreased the highlights and increased the shadows, we've brought these two values closer. Now, what that means is that the highlights and the shadows are are closer together in luminance. And let's take a look at how it started and where we are now. So you can see we've brightened up those shadows, and this right here is honestly where you can stop with a lot of photos. Just brighten up those shadows and decrease the highlights to a point that looks natural and you're probably good to go unless it's really bad. Now in this particular case I want to do a little more because I still think that their faces are a little bit darker for what they should be uh, in this type of portrait. So what I want to do is um, I'm grab my handy Wacom tablet and uh, we're going to grab the brush tool and we're basically going to do the same thing. And let's double click effect to reset it. You want to get in the habit of doing that all the time because you never know what you were working on before. And what I'm going to do is bump up the shadows all the way. And um, I think I'm going to start just with the shadows bumped up. So what I want is a brush size that's good for their face. And I want to also make sure that I have auto mask turned on. Now auto mask is going to uh, two two things it's going to do. One, it's going to make sure I don't get into the sky here or get off their face. But also, what the auto mask looks at luminosity as well. So it's actually going to do a pretty decent job of preventing me from getting into those highlights when I'm adjusting the, or trying to brighten up these shadows. So let's turn on the overlay. Press the O button to do that. And you can start painting in here with the brush. Don't worry if you get up into the hair because the hair is in those shadows too. Same with the, the neck down here. And as you can see, it kind of did it did a pretty good job of sticking to the dark areas. Those highlights aren't touched as much. Let's do the same thing for this guy over here. And Auto Mask does a pretty good job on this right side of his face, not going into the sky there. Let's brighten this up down here. I think some areas of here, if you've got all a little bit into the highlights, so what I want to do is jump over to the erase tool and make sure you're using 100% uh, feather on this and just kind of use the edge, turn auto mask off, and use kind of the, the feathered edge to make sure that you know that those highlights are not being changed. So there's two layers here of guarding against brightening up those highlights. One is the mask that we're using that we just painted in. The other one is the fact that we're using the shadows adjustment and the shadows adjustment is not going to brighten up highlights. So we've really zeroed in on what we need to in this image. So let's turn off the overlay 
and let's see how we did just brightening up those shadows. Here's a little toggle switch for the brush adjustments. And you can see we got a little bit more. And that's, if you're just using the shadows adjustment, you're going to see mostly natural look. If you want to push it a little more, you can go over to the exposure. Now the problem with that is if you go too far, it looks unnatural because what we have here is the sunlight on the left side here. And we're going to have, if we have too bright of a face, it's going to look unnatural. So what we can do here to balance this out is to add a little bit of warmth to the brush. And that's going to balance it out a little bit. So now we've added some exposure and we've added some warmth to kind of balance out the sunlight look on that bright side of the face. If you're shooting outside, you have to worry about the yellowish color from the sunlight as well as the brightness. So color is something that we kind of forget about when we're changing exposure or trying to fill, fill in these shadows, but you got to make sure the color matches as well or else it's going to look really unnatural. So I think we have our finished result here. I like the way this looks. Let's go with the before and the after. If you thought these were useful so far, make sure you hit that like button. There's more to come. So I think our image looks great right now. And I don't think I would do any more on this particular photo if I was delivering this image. But I want to show you one more technique that you could use in some images and uh, combine it with the brush tool and that's the range mask. And I think this is a very helpful tool to help you narrow things down and make sure you're only attacking the shadows. So we've got our brush selected and you can put on the overlay to see that's where we've painted in. And if we turn on this range mask, we can go to luminance. And what I can do is make sure I remove, by pulling this down, I can remove it from the highlights. Now, I think we did a good job painting in the highlights here, but what this does is just make sure that you're not brightening up the highlights. I like to bring it down to about 60 or so, and that just protects those highlights in the area where you may have brushed a little over too far into them. It's In many situations, it's going to be much too subtle for you to notice, but it's good practice to just throw on this luminance mask to make sure you're protecting those highlights, especially if you're using exposure, because the shadow slider is going to kind of protect those highlights and not affect those highlights anyway, but the exposure slider is going to affect anything that is painted in with the brush. So throwing on this range mask is going to do a good job making sure that exposure slider is not targeting something that's already bright, and that's going to help you balance things out even more. One last tip for a photo like this, if you've adjusted the exposure a lot and you've really had to push in, it looks a little unnatural, jump down here to the color grade. And one good thing about a color grade is that it helps the photo blend. In other words, you have these different luminosities and, and it uh, maybe it doesn't quite match, but if you wanted to take those highlights and add a little bit of a yellow or orange tone to the entire highlights. So let's, you know what, for, for demonstration, let's push it up a little bit. Now we've added kind of this sunlight glow, if you will, this orange tint to the, to the highlights here, giving kind of an orange tint to the entire image. Now, this isn't a tutorial on color grading, but it's just an example of what you can do to help the image blend in once you've got the exposure right. Now there's one last thing you can do, and this is not really something that works all that well with portrait images. I'm going to show you on this image, but this is a good one you can use in your landscape images as well if you want to balance it out a little more. And that's to attack the luminance using the color values. So in this case, we know that the brightness is a kind of in this yellow area. We can go up to the HSL panel can go down to luminance and rather than guess at what color we can grab the little adjustment tool grab that adjustment tool go over to here and you can see 
yeah, it's kind of yellow and orange. These colors here are bouncing between yellow and orange. Click and drag that down. Now, I would not recommend using this for sunlight and portraits because you're just going to decrease the luminance of that yellow sunlight and the result is going to be a very yellow face and it doesn't really work all that well with portraits. But this is a technique that you can really use in landscapes because we're dealing with things that aren't skin colored. You don't have to worry about skin tones being accurate. Um, you can decrease things like leaves or uh, blue sky or, or any anything you want using this HSL panel here to adjust the luminance of the image and give it a little bit more targeted approach. So there you have it. Some quick, simple ways to deal with harsh shadows. Some things to keep in mind if you're shooting in the daytime, bring along a flash. I know it seem, you may think that flash is only when it's dark out, but actually using a flash in the daylight really helps to fill in those shadows. Also look for open shade. Look for areas, uh, large areas of shade. It's a lot easier to get a good exposure in the shade than it is in the sunlight.